and welcome to another lesson together. So our first video of 2022 is gonna be a little bit more on the short and sweet side. I wanna show you how connecting arpeggios and scales in kind of a unique way can really help you kind of unpack the fretboard and illuminate the fretboard and give you some really cool licks while you're at it. For today's examples, I'm gonna be playing in the key of G major and I'm gonna show you some examples using some major seventh arpeggios, which consist of a root note, a third, a fifth, and a seventh. If you're not too well versed in music theory yet, don't worry, that's okay. This video will still be of benefit to you. This is a major seventh arpeggio. Root, third, fifth, seventh, root. The root note of this arpeggio fingering is on the D string. This is a G note on the fifth fret of the D string, so this is a G major seven arpeggio. This would be a C major seven arpeggio. Around these arpeggios, I'm also going to visualize the G major pentatonic scale patterns. I'm also visualizing the G major pentatonic scales in and around the C major seven arpeggio. So the bottom line is, these two arpeggios are the exact same fingering. They're just being shifted up or down by five frets. However, the scale notes around the respective arpeggios are different. So we're kind of planting two identical arpeggio fingerings within two different areas of the scale. Kind of a funny way to think of it, but hopefully that helps. This concept of using a movable static arpeggio fingering as a springboard to explore asymmetrical scale patterns is one that can really work well in building up confidence moving up and down the fretboard. Let's hear some examples with some tab. I'm just gonna be playing over a simple backing track here. It's gonna be two bars of a G chord followed by two bars of a C chord, rinse and repeat. In these examples, since we're in the key of G major, the G chord we can consider as the one chord and the C chord we can consider as the four chord. right? I'm going to take it one step further by using a slightly trickier movable major seven arpeggio fingering. So same arpeggio, same type of arpeggio, but it's using a different fingering. It's a bit, covers a bit more ground. And instead of just relying on the G major pentatonic scale for my surrounding scale notes, I'm going to just use the full um, on a bridge, just G major scale, which has seven notes as opposed to the major pentatonics, five notes. Just really quickly, I wanna thank everyone who's subscribed to the page so far. As I'm recording this, I think I have somewhere around 240 subscribers. Uh, I know some of you are probably chuckling a little bit, <laughs> but I wanna say thank you. Um, I really appreciate you. Like, I really appreciate each and every one of you. <laughs> I am gonna have some really strong content coming your way throughout 2022. So I wanna say, if there are any electric guitar topics that you would like to see videos on, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. Here's the next major seven arpeggio fingering. The root note is on the A string. Here's a G note on the A string, and this would be a G major seven arpeggio. Root, third, fifth, seventh, root, third, fifth, seventh, root. Here's that same fingering moved to a C note, making a C major seven arpeggio. Root, third, fifth, seventh, root, third, fifth, seventh, root. So something that is both really cool, but also something you just have to watch out for as you're kind of experimenting with this, is that when we play that G major seven arpeggio, which remember, that's our one chord, we have 
and I can actually play, here I'm on the 12th fret of the B string, but if I play this note, sliding up one fret, this note here is a perfect fourth relative to our root note of G. So, and that is an in key note that sounds really good to do a. However, when I do the C major seven arpeggio, I have to be kind of careful because if I, if I just do that same fingering, just shifting up one fret on the B string, that sixth fret actually is not in key. Um, when we're playing the C major seven arpeggio, the scale notes around that arpeggio are a little bit different. So we would actually have to go one fret higher because this C major seven arpeggio is the four chord. As a result, the scale notes surrounding it are different. We want to get really technical. This note here, relative to the root note of the arpeggio, C, this F sharp, this is actually a sharp four. So when we play the major seven arpeggio, you can extend it by adding a perfect fourth. When we play the four chord C major seven arpeggio, you just have to just kind of adjust that and you're playing a sharp fourth there. you enjoyed these examples and stay tuned we've got lots of cool videos coming your way in 2022 remember consider liking or commenting on or subscribing to this channel if you enjoyed what you saw here today it really helps a lot cheers <laughs>